For males that pee in a toilet, your urine should head, head toward the bottom of the toilet. It should be more dense than the water because you have sewage in it. And so, important to check your urine once in a while and make sure you have sediment in it. You'll only know whether one kidney's filtering, but at least somebody's filtering. If your urine is clear, forget it. You're not filtering your lip system anymore. And that's when you start having symptoms of pain, swelling. Pain and swelling are some of the symptoms of the lymph system backing up. Now let's go one, one, one step further, and I think this is vital that everyone understand this next step. Because it is also simple to understand, but vital to understand because this is the core of basically all life in creation. And of course, particularly relative to you on this planet right now. From a perspective of a chemist, all life is nothing but chemistry. Uh, and chemistry, all these chemical compounds are all made from the elements. And we call the elements elements because those are the building blocks of all creation. And they found a couple of new elements the other day, named them kind of goofy names. I couldn't even pronounce them hardly. And I brought us up to 123, 126 elements now, I forget. So we have uh, a fair amount of elements that make up and comprise all the chemistry. Calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, zinc, arsenic, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, helium, you know, nitrogen. So we have all these components that make up all of life. And then, because we thought we were maybe better than God or something, we decided to play with chemistry. I had a chemistry set growing up. I always loved chemistry. Science. I've been, a, I've been, uh, I excelled in science. I love science. It's just, I love to see how things are put together and how they're made. But they must fit. Our theories and our understandings must fit like a hand in a perfect glove with creation and this biosphere and and the activity and the life and times of all the species. Everything must fit. Diet, nutrition, everything from elimination to activity to rest. All these aspects of life must be observed and understood. Man, seemed, his mind has carried him so far away from the world, the biosphere, the planet, that we feel like we're the superior ones on the planet, and I thought that has done nothing to serve man well at all. It's created a narcissism and a, a I don't care about all life. So in chemistry, we've made a lot of things. We've made coal tar products, we've made antifreeze products, we've, we, we've literally made plastic everywhere. We've literally made all kinds of, of things, ink, we've done all kinds of chemistry out there. Of course, in doing that, we've had to break apart the chemistry that was created by the Supreme Being. Chemistry in nature is all bonded together. Where arsenic in nature is a microtrace element, is a nutritive element. If I bring it forward like a elemental, say like calcium, and I take it at that level, I'm going to die from it. So God put everything in proper ratios and magnetically bonded together. When we go in and we rip apart chemistry, we break the magnetic bonding. Now we have an open-end magnetic bonding or ability to bond with something else. So what we've created is free radicals from the bonding of chemistry in ways that we don't understand yet. We don't know what's antagonistic chemistry to another. We know some things like vitamin C is antagonistic to calcium. So we know some of these things, but we don't know very much of them. Studied chemistry all my life. So that's a problem, but there's one thing you must understand. No matter how much chemistry we're looking, let's say we had 10,000 compounds in front of us, and we had 100 elements in front of us. How many sides, how many sides can we divide all this chemistry into? How many sides are there to chemistry? Of all these thousands and thousands of compounds and probably hundreds of elements, how, do, how many sides can we divide this up into? Most of you already know that. A lot of you don't. And that is simply two. Two. I don't think there's anything much more simple. So what you see in God... And you see in creation is the simplistic 
and the complex. You must understand the simplistic before you understand the complex. Because if you jump into the complex, you lose. You lose the simplicity because the simplicity is the foundation of the complex. And so we tend to praise intellectualism and academics. The problem is sometimes the more education a person has, the stupider they are. And you see this a great deal in allopathy. A stupid modality that it ranks top of the killers of the planet. Last year in America, I think it was Gary Noll and a couple of other people put together, but I'm telling you, the website is full of these facts and figures. Even other medical doctors are squealing now on other medical doctors. Over one million people killed last year allopathically. One million! None naturopathically, but I'm a state and I'm going to protect its citizens. I'm going to bar naturopathy, but I'm going to allow allopathy. Oh, it kills a lot of people, but it's okay. Nature it doesn't hurt anybody, but no. Nah. For the sake of the well-being of the people, we're going to allow the killers in and those that do no harm out. I, I find that totally, totally interesting. Now, there's two sides to chemistry. What are they? Now, the nature of these two sides of chemistry is vital to understand. The two sides of chemistry can, can be paired or can be compared to male and female. The one side of chemistry can be considered the men. The other side of chemistry can be considered the ladies. Okay? Now, the male side of chemistry is by far the aggressive side of chemistry. Men are aggressive. They like to tear things apart. I was asking a guy in the other day if he had a screwdriver because I wanted to tear this phone apart and see how it was made. That was the male side of me. The female side of me is going to take a, a paint brush and put flowers on my phone. Because the female side of chemistry is the healing, the building side. Females create. They're the creative side. They sing. They dance. They write music, poetry. They, they, they knit. They make quilts. The male side of chemistry tears things apart. Essential. Not one is better over the other unless you have too much of one. Especially if you have too much males together, you have a very aggressive mix. Nothing wrong with that at certain stages. So, men, they're inflammatory. Women, anti-inflammatory. Now, when you see a male that's creative, that's his female side. I'm a musician, so that's my female side. I get in touch with that. I was raised by my grandmother and my mom and my sister. And then I had a grandfather who was a workaholic. And too much aggression there. I, I, I like the other side. So I was a musician into creative arts. That's my female side. But I can get my male side. I was a farm boy throwing hay, cutting Christmas trees. I mean, that was my male side. But I always like to come over on the female side too. And that's the way it is in chemistry. There's all levels of female chemistry and all levels of male chemistry. That's simple. Again, male chemistry inflammatory. Female chemistry, anti-inflammatory. To make it simple, male chemistry is referred to as corrosive chemistry in chemistry. And of course, the name of male chemistry is acids. Acids are the corrosive side of nature. Very aggressive. The main side or predominant side of chemistry on this planet is called base chemistry. Or another word that's highly used is alkaline chemistry. The base or alkaline side of chemistry is the female healing side of chemistry, which used to dominate this planet by 80% to 20%. In other words, the atmosphere at this level and fruits and vegetables predominantly were 80% uh, base or alkaline chemistry to only 20% acid. In other words, there's a lot more uh, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium than there was phosphorus, iron, and the acid side. And this was very important because your blood is predominantly base chemistry. 7.4 is the pH of blood, or should be. So you can't dump acids into the blood without severely hurting yourself. Matter of fact, if your blood becomes acidic, what is the end result of that? Well, about four minutes from now, I'll be probably putting some flowers on your grave because your blood can't be acidic without killing you. That, that's simple. 
So you can't put acids in the blood. It must be regulated. So phosphorus in your acid side, your nitrogen side of chemistry, is the lowest side of chemistry. Man has to do the other way. We, for some reason, medical doctors think protein is the cat's meow, and the body can't even use it. So what we have is a recommendation of high acid foods in life, grains, beans, uh, meats, cooked dairy products, all these are highly acidic foods into a blood that is supposed to be alkaline. You can imagine that doesn't make the blood very happy. Matter of fact, the blood shocked. Oh my God, if you just ate a piece of meat, you could die from that. Because of the dominance of acid chemistry in the blood, you could bring that homeostasis of blood down to the acid side. That's it. But the blood can steal something. The body can take calcium out of the walls of your arteries, out of the walls of your veins, out of the, your fingernails, out of your bones. But particularly out of the walls when it's your blood, it'll steal them out of the walls of your vascular system. And guess what your symptoms going to be then? Bruising easy, varicose veins, spider veins, hemorrhoids, brittle fingernails, osteoporosis, scoliosis. You can just keep going right down along like connective tissue weaknesses. Everything starts bulging, herniations from aneurysms go right on down the road. The body's stealing from its structure to fight acids. Because in this world, in this planet, if acids win, you lose. National Geographic did a beautiful show on the Appalachian Trail. And they were showing all these states. And there were park rangers, forest rangers in each of these states checking the water. And this one, one forest ranger says, well, you see that six-legged frog down there? Whoa, wow, why, what's that six-legged frog? It's a mutated frog. Well, how did that happen? The forest ranger said, acid rain. The acids are coming out of the atmosphere. You know why? Because pollution is acidic. Some of these countries I can't even go into anymore because it burns me so bad to breathe. They don't have catalytic converters. Car exhaust, acidic. Factories, acidic. We've dumped acids. Matter of fact, in L.A., I heard there's a warning that if you're 70 years or older, move out. Because that mushroom cloud is a dark acid mushroom cloud and lung cancer skyrocketing in the 70 year older olders. So now you're getting a good understanding that acid side of chemistry, not necessarily our friend, we need it. Your body produces a few acids, hydrochloric acid, that's stomach acid, and it's needed to release pepsin because your body cannot use protein. Your body can only use what proteins are made of, and that's called amino acids. You get plenty of amino acids in fruits and vegetables. All the strongest animals in the world do not eat protein. Notice that? Your primate families, very few do protein whatsoever, and that's only where they're trapped and are forced to. Unless it's that prime, wild primate family right now that were released, where man got them stuck on meat, and now they're, they're eating other monkeys. And that, they're, carno, they're, they're cannibals totally uh, bizarre for that species.